Wow! There have so many cool books here. Wow. I wonder if they have one on flies. Because, well, flies are my favorite thing. I'll have to look. But right now, I want to welcome you to Bookshop Tales. Yeah, Mr. C, the chameleon here. Oh, it's so good to see you guys. It's been a while, yeah. I move kind of slow. Looks like you've grown a bit. Hmm? Yeah. Well, I'm so glad you joined us for this episode because it has a great book and a lot of other fun things. So, just sit right back and enjoy. Is that a fly on the ceiling? Hello, my friends. Oh, look at all of you today. I'm so happy to see my friends. I hope you are all having a really great day. Thank you so much for making Bookshop Tales part of that day. We're always happy to see you. I came here today to have some fun. W would you like to have some fun? You would? Oh, that's great. I was going to do the monkey dance. You, you don't know the monkey dance? Oh, would you like to learn it? You would? Oh, that's great. It's pretty easy, and it's lots of fun. Now, what is the monkey dance? Um, well, you know, it's the way I get my wiggles out. Yeah. Sometimes you just have to sit. And sit. It's kind of hard. But maybe you need to listen to a teacher or something else. But what happens is wiggles build up. <laughs> And you need to get them out somehow. That's why I do the monkey dance. When I have a chance, I do the monkey dance. Yeah. So, if you want to learn the monkey dance, I can teach it to you. Yeah. You can do the monkey dance either sitting in a chair or standing up. Whatever you'd like. Well, are you ready? Are you ready to get started? Me too. All right. Here we go. Let's go side to side. One side. And the other side. Forward. And back. Shake your ears. Shake them all around. Make your arm be silly. <laughs> Switch your arm if you want to. Bob up and down. Big finish. Oh, wow. You guys had never done the monkey dance, and you did it perfectly. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. Thank you so much for letting me teach that to you. And remember, when you have a chance, do the monkey dance. Now, just make sure that once you get your wiggles out, you're in a safe place. You're not going to crash into anything, or break anything, or bother people. That's the best way. Well, I am so glad to see you today. But it's time to say goodbye. I'll see you soon, though. Bye-bye! Oh, oh, let me make sure my whiskers look good. Yeah, I can yeah. kind of wash, wash this ear a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that looks better. Yeah. What? What? We're rolling? Oh. Ha 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 ha, sorry. Um. <clears throat> Hello. I'm Max the Cat, 
and I'm here to read you a great story today by Susan Cooper. Uh, it, it's called A Pipkin of Pepper. Mm -hmm, that's the title. And it's published by Scholastic Books. I love this book because there's a cat in it. Yeah, the best books have cats. The best books have cats. Yeah. All right. Can't wait to get started. Something was bubbling in the old white cabin. What was cooking in the pot? Pumpkin soup! Made by a cat, a squirrel, and a duck, waiting just for a pipkin of salt to make it the best you ever tasted. But... No salt left, quacked the duck. They'd run clean out. And it was true. There wasn't a grain, not a speckle of salt to put in the pumpkin soup. Would it taste good? No. And they're all going bleh, bleh. The cat said, I'm going shopping. Oh, please, begged the duck. Let me come too. But the duck hadn't been to the city, and he had a habit of wandering off. What if you get lost, said the cat. I won't squawk the duck, and if I do, I'll find a police dog. You'll never find a police dog, said the cat. If you're ever lost, said the squirrel, the best thing to do, stay where you are, and we'll find you. That's good advice. It was time to catch the bus. Can I go? pleaded the duck. Can I go? he said. And he wiggled, and he wheedled, and he bobbed, and he begged, until the cat said, All right! If you promise to hold on tight. And I'll come too, said the squirrel, and hang on to you. Oh, there they go in the bus. But the duck felt scared when he first saw the city. It was very big and very busy. He stared at the stores and the towers and quacked. Let's get that salt and go straight back. Hold on tight, said the squirrel. The salt shop isn't far from here. And the cat led them past more towers and more stores selling all sorts. Puddings and pastries, pilchards and prawns, lobsters and light bulbs. And pizza. Mm. And pepper. And that gave the duck an idea. Wouldn't it be fine, he murmured, if we bought some pepper for the pumpkin soup? I'll bet it would taste. Delicious! Can we buy some? Pepper, squeaked the squirrel. We don't need that. There's the salt shop, said the cat. We have a job to do, and we don't want to miss the bus back. You see, cats are very trustworthy, logical creatures. Mm -hmm. But the duck wasn't even listening. He was thinking about pepper for the pumpkin soup. One pipkin, would that be enough? He turned around to ask, but the other
brothers had gone. Lost, quacked the duck. I'm lost in the city. He scuttled off in a terrible tizzy. <gasps> Uh-oh, he forgot to stay put. Mmm, let's see what happens. Inside the salt shop, the cat and the squirrel were busily buying a small bag of salt. They didn't even notice that Duck was missing until the salt was paid for and packed. Where can he be? howled the cat, and the squirrel wailed. Where did we see him last? At the pepper shop, they both said together, and they hurried back. But the poor duck was lost in the crowd. He couldn't even find the pepper shop now. He collided with a kind mother hen. Are you lost? She clucked. Yes, bawled the duck. I can't find my friends. Where did you see them last? Asked the hen. At the pepper shop, sniffed the duck. And I should have waited there until they came back. But I forgot. I know the shop, said the hen, and the pepper dog might have seen your friends. Let's go ask him. A cut and a squirrel, said the pepper dog. They just left by the other door. And I'll never see them again, wailed the duck. And nothing would cheer him up. Not even a drink, not even a snack, not even a packet of pepper. Oh, but look, they're calling the police. It says, police, we have a lost duck situation. Hush, said the hen. We've dialed 911. Any minute now, they'll come right through that door. Pretty soon, through that door came six police dogs with megaphones, four helpful fire dogs, two foxes, who left rather quickly, and, oh, they're calling, calling cat and squirrel, cat and squirrel. The squirrel and the cat. The duck was so pleased to see them. The cat wasn't even cross. And the squirrel didn't scold. Even though they'd missed the last bus. Who needs a bus, quacked the duck. We've got a police dog to fly us home. The cat and the squirrel were happy. They had their salt for the pumpkin soup. As for the duck, he had his packet of pepper. He held on tightly all the way back. Home again in the old white cabin, pumpkin soup in the cooking pot. Made by the cat who slices up the pumpkin. Made by the squirrel who stirs in the water. Made by the duck who tips in a pipkin of salt and a pipkin of pepper. Oh no, a packet of pepper. He put the whole thing in there. Uh oh, would the soup still be the best you ever tasted? Mm. Ah, 
delicious. Delicious. <laughs> oh, dear, the stuck is sneezing in soup everywhere. Oh, I like that story. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me today here. I'm so happy that I got to read this book to you. I hope to see you soon again. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was taking my daily nap. I'm glad to see you guys are back. Yeah. I hope you had a great time here on our episode. Right? Yeah. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and send me some flies. Yeah. Care of the bookshop. To Mr. C. I'd appreciate it. So, see you next time. Oh, bye. <laughs>